Hi, this is Megan with Beadaholic, and today I'm going to show you how to use a bead loom. And we have two different options right now available for bead looms. Um, we have this less expensive beadsmith bead loom, and then we have this really nice wooden bead loom. And assembled, this is the wooden bead loom, and it's you can see it's quite large and the metal one is quite a bit smaller. If you're just starting out, you can definitely start with the smaller, uh, less expensive bead loom. If you do a lot of loom work, you might want to invest in the wooden one. The main difference, as far as the size goes, is you will be able to do a much wider project on a loom with a wider area for the warp threads. This loom, you can only do your project about that wide. So you can see how much more space you have to work with here. The length is not an, uh, not an issue. So I'm mostly going to work with this loom, but I will also show you how, you would, how it would be different if you're working with this loom. So with the beadsmith loom, you also get instructions. some seed beads, and then a little kit with thread, needles, and a needle threader in it. The needles that come with it are a little bit short and a little bit thick depending on the beads you're using and how wide your work is. You may want to uh, use like a size 12 beading needle that will give you a little bit more length to get through in one pass. Or you can also use a big eye needle, which come in very long lengths and you just put the thread in the end and pull it tight. And this would allow you to get through even a wider piece of work in one pass so you don't have to come out. So there's two different ways to thread your loom and which way you use would depend on how long the piece you're going to do is. If you're going to do a piece that would fit between the edges of your loom, then there's a really quick and easy way to thread your loom. You would just tie your thread to one of the little nail heads here. And then you start, you decide how wide you're going to have your piece be and you start going across the loom, around the nail head, and back and put your thread, one thread, between each coil in the wire. And you just weave it back and forth. And like I said, this is gonna be if you don't need to have any extra thread for slack and you're only gonna work with this length here, that's a really quick and easy way to do it. However, if you need it to be longer, then we have to do it a slightly different way. It is not quite as quick, but it's not too hard. So if you're going to create a longer piece, you need to do a slightly different method of threading your loom. And um, I actually switched to Nymo, nylon beading thread for this, because you don't want it to get tangled up. And the cotton thread it comes with is kind of tangly. So for this, your thread lengths need to be about two feet longer than the piece that you're going to create. And any time that you thread your loom, you want one more thread across than the number of beads that you want your, to use for the width of your piece. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm only going to do five beads across. So I only need six lengths of thread. Okay, so once you've measured your strands to go across as your warp threads, just go ahead and tie a knot in the end, just an overhand knot. Then you're going to divide your threads in half just after the knot. So 
I'm using six, I would just put three to each side and divide that in half. And you're going to put one half of your threads to either side of the little nail head. You're going to go all the way down to the other end and tie another knot in the end. And take that split in the thread and you're going to lay that with one half of the threads to either side of that nail head as well. And then you're going to loosen this style here and you just want to start rolling it back. And as it rolls around it will tighten the threads across the loom. And you don't want to pull them super tight because we still need to redistribute them throughout the coils. Just to where it, it has a little bit of give left. Tighten that up. And this part can be a little tricky. It helps if you use a pair of tweezers. And you're going to start on the side of the loom that has the excess thread on it so that it doesn't get all twisted up. And you're just going to put each thread across into its own coil so they lay nice and flat. And then you're going to carry each coil or each thread across to lay it in a coil on the other side of the loop. If it's a little twisted up on this end, that's not a problem as long as it's straight across. And if it's a little too loose, you can just pull this dowel a little tighter and it will help it to stay in place. So when you're all done placing those, go ahead and loosen up that screw so that you can pull your threads tight across and screw it back down nice and tight so that they don't move on their own. When you're ready to work, you should have your threads evenly spaced spanning across your loom like that. So to thread this style of loom, it doesn't have the little nail heads. What it has instead is a bar that fits into this dowel. So you would thread this by laying your threads across and then using the bar to secure them. So you wouldn't be able to do the, the super quick method on this one, just going around that nail head. You would just need to cut lengths for this one. Lay them across, put the bar down to, to secure them, and then it's just the same principle of loosening that screw and turn this to tighten. The next thing you're going to do is cut a length of thread as long as you're comfortable working with. You can always tie off and add new thread later and we do have an instructional video on how to do that also if you're not familiar on how to do that. So go ahead and pull the thread through your needle leave yourself a tail on one side and then for purposes of demonstration I'm just going to use the beads that came with this loom. And a little note about the size of the beads you're using. The looms are really fast and easy to use when the beads are about the size between your threads. And you'll notice that this this loom has a little bit larger space between the coils than this one does. So this one would probably be a little bit more suited to smaller beadwork. So you can use beads that are, that are smaller than the width between your threads. And when you pull it tight, it will just condense the width. It can, be, it can just take a little bit longer to get each bead in where you want it to go. When they're about the right width, they just pop right in between the threads. So just something to keep in mind. 
So I have six threads. That's enough room for five beads. So I'm going to go ahead and start by picking up five beads on my needle. And I'm not going to do this in any pattern for the demonstration. So just keep in mind if you do want to use a pattern, they usually are shown on a, a grid. They have a little a couple of patterns on the instructions here. They also have some graph paper, which I scribbled on already, trying to test out a pattern. Um, or if you're following instructions from a different project or pattern, they will usually involve a grid like that, and you just work along the strips of the grid as you go. Or you can make up your own as you go as well. I'm just going to put them in randomly, just to show you how the loom works. So start by pulling your thread or your needle under the strings of the loom. And you take the pad of your finger underneath your beads and you just push them up from below through the strings. And you see with the beads the size that fits just in there, they pop right through the threads. If you have smaller ones, you will need to kind of help them along. This is super easy when they are the right length. And you want to pull your thread until you have about a six to eight inch tail on the end. And then you're going to take your needle and you're going to go back through the way you came. The big key important thing to remember here is that you brought your, your needle and your threads underneath the warp threads on your way that way. They need to go above the warp threads on the way back. So they're going through the beads again, but you need to make sure that your needle is above every one of these threads. Otherwise the bead will fall out. And you just pull. I'm going to leave this tail. You'll just tie it off and weave it in later. And now you're ready to do the next row. Just pick up five more beads. Pull your needle back under. And push them through. Bring your needle back. Just like that. And your work will spread out a little bit. You can just use the side of the needle to kind of push them together to make them nice and straight without a lot of spaces between them. And you can just keep working until it's as long as you want. And just for every row, bring the thread under, push the beads into their spot, and bring the needle back over. And if you bring it back over and a bead falls out, that means that you didn't get the needle over your warp threads. So you just need to take to pick that row out and do that row over again. When you're going to use the extra, the excess of your thread to make your piece longer, you actually, I didn't do this the right way, you actually want to work towards your extra thread. So if you're going to have, if you're going to work left to right, you would want to have your extra thread on the right, not on the left. If you're going to work right to left, then you put it on the left. And if you're working across this way and you get to the end here and you want more thread, all you do is you loosen up both of the screws a little bit and you turn the left one and the right one towards each other and you can see that it advances your work over and you just keep working and if you want it really long it can pop you know up over there as long as the, the beads on the end will keep it straight just remember that when you're done moving the dowels that you tighten them back up so that it stays nice and taut. Now, beadwork that you do on a loom, 
does usually need to be mounted onto something else. So, and that is because when you're done with this beadwork, you can tie off your weft threads, these threads here that you go this way with. You can tie those off and weave them in, but your warp threads are between each bead. And it would be really bulky on the ends to have all that trying to weave back in. So usually what you do when you're done with a piece of bead weaving off of a loom is you cut it off the loom and you take these threads and you tuck them behind. And you would either tape them in place or glue them in place to keep them in one place. I usually will glue them down. You glue them down and then you glue this onto a foundation. And then all you see on the top is the bead weaving. You don't see all those messy threads on the back. And that is how you use a bead loom.